Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to compare a new product versus an old product. I thought that would be so fun because, um, well, this is kind of a funny story. Uh, a couple weeks ago I did a video, well, my, gosh, it was probably like a month ago now, I did a video, um, and it might even be longer ago by the time this video publishes, I did a video showing you all of my watercolor pencils. Now that's something I've been doing this year, um, rather than shopping and buying new stuff, the irony I'm sure will be apparent in a moment, um, I've been going through the stuff I already have and um, kind of pulling them all out in a category, comparing them, and and kind of uh, giving you a rundown over what I have, what I'd recommend, what I wouldn't buy again, and um, um, that sort of thing. Now all the things that I have in my stash I have because I still think they're good quality and I do teach in person and when this pandemic's over I'll be back to doing workshops and once my kids are grown and flown I intend on doing um, larger classes kind of on a full-time basis like I used to before I had children. So that's why I have so many things. But anyway, when I was doing that video I showed you my tin of 72 Derwent watercolor pencils. These are the wor first the, not the worst. They're the first watercolor pencils that I ever used. I got them in the late 90s. They were a gift from my mom, and um, I think they're the first watercolor pencils I ever used. They're definitely, they definitely, watercolor pencils weren't a big thing that I knew about at that point. I, I was a watercolor painter, and um, I really enjoyed these, and this is what the tin looks like. I tried to find exactly when the, this tin came out, but I couldn't uh, find a date, but there's the color selection for you to see. But they served me well. They um, were very easy to use. They're, they're very subtle compared to like, um, say, the Ink Tents by Derwent or the Albright Drawer. They were just a very easy to use pencil. I enjoyed them. And um, I definitely prefer painting with paints more, but uh, but yeah, they, they, got, they did the job. They were kind of a novelty and um, they're fun to use. So this is what they used to look like. These gray barrels with the um, the color tips there, about an inch and a quarter of, of color on the end. So um, the folks at Derwent saw this video and they're like, oh my word, she has like one of the oldest sets of watercolor pencils and they offered to send me an updated set, which I thought would be kind of fun to compare because I love comparing new and old things. Um, because it's neat to see how things change or stay the same over the years. So this one, let's say this is probably about 25 years old, this set here. This is the new set of Derwent watercolor pencils. This is a 36 count set, and if you have watercolor pencils, you know you really don't need a very large set as long as you have a good variety of colors. So I'm going to show you, I pulled out the um, the colors from that set that matched the colors in this set, and I did a side-by-side -side swatch so you could kind of see how they go. So this is how the pencils look now. They have that, um, Derwent has recent, I don't know how recently, because I have a lot of older pencils that that are branded a little bit differently, uh, because I've been using Derwent's for a long time, but they now have a navy blue matte barrel, uh, the color flash at the end, it, it shows you what color the um, pencil will be. I found these to be fairly accurate here, um, and they have uh, kind of a matte silver stamping, which is kind of nice, versus a shiny metallic stamping, which is, for me is harder to read. Like if I show you like a Prismacolor, um, if it's not like a super, like, I don't know, I find like the Prismacolor pencils can be very difficult to read because it's so shiny, um, or ones that do the shiny gold. I like the matte because it's easy to read, especially matte silver on navy. That's a very easy to read barrel. The old version, which actually was also pretty easy to read because they had a light gray barrel with black. Um, black printing. I wish more pen pencil companies would keep in mind how difficult it is to read the names and numbers on their pencils because um, a lot of people that enjoy color pencil art are not spring chickens and we <laughs> need a little help sometimes seeing our, our names and numbers on the pencils. Um, you know, it's fine for Crayola with their kid, the people using their pencils are like eight years old, they'll see it just fine. But uh, when you get to a certain age, it's harder to read those things anyway. They're, those are also very easy to read. So the old ones say England, Rexel, Derwent, Watercolor, Zinc Yellow, number one. These say England, Derwent, Watercolor. They've got the little, um, this is also really handy. If you have a bunch of um, Derwent pencils, they put a little paintbrush on the pencil if it's water soluble, so you'd know. Um, sometimes they have similar pencils, like they rebranded their metallic pencils and discontinued the old ones that were water soluble, but if you happen to cross a set of the old ones, you'll see that little paintbrush and you'll know it's a water soluble one. Um, and there's the color name and number. Very easy to read. I like it. Uh, also, they're hexagonal barrels, so they're not going to roll off. Comfortable to hold. Um, this was a shiny barrel, and these are matte. And I do like the matte barrels. I think matte, like paint or matte plastic, it's a marker. I feel like the matte just 
it's a little more comfortable to hold, doesn't get sweaty in your hands for some reason like Glossy does, and it just feels a little bit more expensive, but um, that's just a personal preference. So this is the range. I'll show you side by side. The range in the 36 colors, and this is the range of 72. Now keep in mind, I swatched this. I, I actually made this swatch just a few years ago, maybe five years ago, um, because I just wanted to make sure I was seeing the colors correctly. And it is on... Actually, this swatch is on the same paper as, uh, as that one over there, because I usually use Fabriano uh, Studio to do my swatches that I keep in my swatch binder and in my um, and in my tins and stuff. But this one, I just had a scrap of, um, I don't know what this one was, but I had a scrap of that lying around already with a swatch chart stamped on it, so I used that. So they're just to show you the difference in the color selection. I think I colored these down a little bit harder for this swatch than I did here. So when I swatch them side by side, I colored them at the same time so that I wouldn't have like, you know, heavier pressure on one than the other and making it uh, an unfair comparison. So there you can see the way that the pencils look differently and you can see the color range. And the color range, I believe, in the sets has not changed whether you bought your pencils now or you bought them five years ago or you bought them 25 years ago. Should be about the same. They come in um, a blister pack of six, which actually has a pretty decent selection of colors I was looking. So um, I think that if you are curious about this line of pencils and you got the set of six, you would have a good assortment of like primary colors to do some mixing. You don't need as many watercolor pencils as you do like dry pencils, like an oil base or a water or a wax based pencil or a pastel pencil because they blend so well with water. So let's look at the colors side by side. So we know that the pencils are painted a different color, the tins look differently. A lot of times they change your tins up fairly frequently anyway, just to kind of um, keep it modern and keep it interesting for the consumer. This is only one layer, which is kind of nice because Derwent's plastic trays are usually a little on the flimsy side. So, um, so it's nice that it's just one layer and I don't have to lift that out and, and risk dropping my pencil. Because you don't want to drop any pencil, any type of pencil. Um, because then you can have issues sharpening later on. So what I did was I swatched the old in the first column, the new in the second column, and then um, two days later I actually tried to lift off to see which ones would lift better, which could be a technique that you want or don't want depending on the type of artwork you do. If you are um, doing greeting cards, you might want to be able to lift out highlights. If you're doing um, painting, you might want to lift out highlights, or you might not. If you don't want to be able to lift it off, you could use ink tents, uh, pans or pencils and um, and then have that kind of indelible layer first and then go on top. Something I realized that it didn't occur to me because this is the Fabriano Studio Paper is what I use for swatches, but um, that's a much more staining paper. So if you like to layer more, it's very inexpensive. Um, I was just thinking about that because of the ink tents, how like on the watercolor paper I usually like is heavily sized. I tend to, um, it tends to lift up a little bit of the ink tents on there. Uh, but this is not as heavily sized, so it might be something you want to consider. It's 25% cotton, acid-free, and cheap. Really cheap. I buy, I would buy it for my kids' classes because it would hold up to what I was doing with the kids' classes. Um, great for swatches, but I prefer to have a heavier sized paper so it can handle scrubbing and things like that. But anyway, on this paper, I did lift up, so I think that would give you a pretty good approximation if you're painting on Bristol or like craft grade watercolor paper or watercolor greeting cards or watercolor postcards. You would be able to go in and lift out a highlight. Um, so just to see, I found that the lay down was pretty consistent um, um, between the new pencils that are fresh uh, off the presses or whatever you want to say, fresh out of the factory, or the older ones that I've had for quite a while. Um, I did, the new ones did feel like they were a little bit softer, but I think it's just because my older ones are older. And so like, you know, oils dry out and things like that. Um, so I think that I did, the difference was so small that I think that's just, just age of the pencil. Um, some colors did seem to change a bit, like this number 20 in the old set, it gives you a much more uh, cleaner crimson color, and the newer version seems a little bit more warm and muddy, um, which is kind of a shame because that's the only cool red in the set, and I think if you are, like say if you were doing, well, you know, if you're doing a, a Christmas card or something and you're painting Santa, it would probably be fine, but if you're doing a lot of botanicals, I, I think it's kind of a shame that there's not like a really clean red. In, um, in this set. And there's not a ton of reds in the Derwent watercolor range. Not that you need a lot, but you do need a good, crisp, clean red. And it looks like number 20 is the cleanest red that they offer. There's also a rose matter lake. Let me look at that one and see how, how that one looks. Maybe that one is a little bit 
more pure. That one would be 21. No, that's still kind of a muted. Um, the, the Carmine is a nice color. You might even want to grab that open stock if you were getting a smaller set and you wanted a true red. I think that one might be a little bit more true um, and a little bit better for like roses or, or something like that. I like to do flowers, so that's a, a lot of people say there's way too many reds in pencil sets, but I like to do flowers. So for me, I like to have, um, I like to have a good selection of reds. Um, the other thing is you can always buy these open stock, meaning individually, because this is from an art like a kind of a legacy art brand, a um, artist quality art brand. Uh, and one of the things that I think makes a company an artist quality company versus a craft or student quality company or product is if you can purchase an individual pencil. And we're going to get to why you might want to purchase these individually instead of getting a set in a couple of minutes. Um, I also noticed the, this uh, purple color here changed. It's definitely more, um, it was more vibrant before. Uh, the new one is a little bit more... Um, dull. Uh, it's a pretty color, it's, but it's it's definitely a little more dull. This color here, I find this kind of magenta color, I think that's what the color, yep, magenta, is a little bit more um, dark. It's a little bit more saturated, but it's not as, well, actually, I don't know if it's more saturated. That seems brighter to me. That seems more intense, but it doesn't seem more saturated. Um, I almost feel like the old range in the reds and purples are have a little bit more variety. Uh, getting down to color number 25, which is dark violet. I really like that new dark violet a lot better. That's really a dark, kind of like royal purple color, whereas the old one was a little bit more, um, the color there looked a little bit more childlike and less trendy. Um, that's a prettier color, I think. It's more like that rich eggplant skin color. Um, this was kind of weird because I, I had, and I had to swatch it a couple times to make sure I didn't make a mistake because there's a couple places where if you can see where I kind of X'd it out or scrubbed it out because I made a mistake and put the new in the old, on the old column and I had to redo it. But, um, so this one I had to check a couple times because I'm like, did I swatch it out right? These colors are quite different. This is number 26. That color is, um, called light violet. And the older color is much cooler and grayer in tone, and the newer color is more pink in tone. They're both pretty colors, but they're definitely different uh, different tones. And I double-checked my colors. And then number 27, which is blue-violet lake, the new color is warmer and more pinky. There's still more of a blue-violet, I would say, but the old one is definitely more of like a... Um, like a gray, uh, a gray-violet. And I don't think the fact that the pencil's old would have made that pencil shift. I mean, usually I think the pencils stay pretty good inside their pencilness. Um, when they change, it tends to be exposed to light. Even my, my swatches that are five years old are fine because they've been in the tin, in the closed tin. And that's another thing. If you're working in a sketchbook or you're working in something that's not going to be seeing light, the light fa you're not going to get that fading that you would from um, it hanging on the wall. I should talk to my sister because I did a couple really large paintings of, of um, amaryllises with these watercolor pencils, and she hung them in her house for quite a while. I don't think they're still up. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to ask her if they faded, and maybe they faded away to nothing and she had to take them down, which could very well be. They were very large paintings done with watercolor pencils, so um, that could be the case. Um, these blues are pretty close. I do find the new one to be much more saturated. Um, these all look really, really good, really close. And uh, this gray, number 68, looks a little different. The new one looks more... The undertones look a little bit more green, and the undertones in the old one look a little blue. There, it's it's well, you know, I do notice that. I think that's pretty um, because the new one looks a little more muddy. The older one looks a little bit cooler and more gray. And then uh, number sixty nine, that one is I find the old version to be a little purpley undertoned, and the other one and the new one to be more neutral. The whites, the old version was more opaque than the new version. They both lifted up pretty well. Um, and I found, I, I made a couple mistakes, so I had to put them at the bottom. So 55 and 59, those looked good. They looked really similar. So one thing I was really surprised about, because, you know, people talk about light fastness all the time and say, you know, shouldn't buy budget brands because the light fastness, you can't trust them. They're not good. Well, I will say that that's true. I wouldn't trust light fastness ratings on a budget brand. Any, any company that's kind of new to the scene, you can't just buy like a single pencil if you run out. Um, I probably wouldn't trust their self-assessed ratings. I would trust Derwent's ratings um, because they've been around a long time and they uh, they assign ratings to all of their professional products or all of their 
uh, I say artist grade. Artist grade doesn't necessarily mean light fast though, guys. So I don't want you to buy a product thinking, well, I'm buying it from Derwen, I'm buying it from Faber Castell, I'm buying it from Karen Dosh. It's got to be light fast. That's not the case. There's always going to be certain colors that are not. And sadly, this range of colors here, or the range of, of uh, Derwent watercolor pencils in general, do not have the best light fastness ratings. Now, I did write, they go on the Blue Will scale, which is a scale of one to eight. And um, eight is perfectly light fast, it's the best. One is fugitive, anything six and above is considered light fast, meaning it should not fade under museum conditions for 100 years. So if we're looking down through here, most of these colors are not light fast. Um, however, if you're a portrait artist, you're a luck or a wildlife artist because most of those colors are. So your, um, what do they call that one? They call it uh, pale peach. Is that Pale Peach 16? Pale Peach is light fast and got, it's got an eight, which I was really surprised for such a pale color. Uh, but number two, the, I mean, number 18, the light um, pale, what's they call that one? Rose Pink. That's only got a two, so that one's gonna bleach out. If you use that for blush on cheeks in a portrait, that's probably gonna disappear on you if you hang it on the wall um, in, a, in probably a matter of months, maybe, yeah, maybe a matter of months. Um, so going through here, I'm just going to point to these and tell you the numbers. Um, remember, anything a six and above is light fast. Anything below that would not be. Um, and the lower the number, the more prone to freighting it would be. So three, four, this is a three, four, five, five, four, eight. That's great. Two, four, five, um, two, four, four, one, one, four, eight. Seven 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 six 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 seven five seven seven. Uh, these are all eights. That's a four, which I was surprised at that. I think that's um, is that light red terracotta? Terracotta only had a four. I was really surprised because it's such an earthy tone. Uh, must be whatever they're using for the pigment in the red. It's rather than using PR one hundred one, which would be like the uh, like a. Indian red or English red or uh, red iron oxide, they must be using a red, like a different red dye, or red pigment in with an earthy tone to make that color. Um, black is an eight, and then we got five, six. So those grays are still, still a little dicey. That one would be all right. Um, white is eight. And then these two are eight down here. So your earth tones look really good. Your, you do have some choices for some light fast blues and greens. The reds don't look great. Um, let me just look at the scale on the reds on there. So yeah, their, their reds are not great. Uh, Matter Carmine is a six. That one is not in this set, but you could always pick that up if that's a color that you think would um, would work for you. And that's why you might wanna buy open stock. So you might wanna say, okay, I want some watercolor pencils. I know I don't need 72 colors because they mix and blend so well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the company's website and I'm gonna look at the light fast charts and I'm gonna write down the colors that will suit me that have high light fast ratings and you can make your own kind of light fast collections and you can do that for pretty much any big brand that sells pencils they're gonna they should have that um, that information just keep in mind that uh, they might not all use the same scale and you've got to make sure you see the key to their scale so that you're not ordering things that are fugitive thinking they're light fast so Derwent uses a blue wool scale because they're from Europe and that's a pretty standard scale over there we use ASTM over here in America so you just have to kind of twist your brain around and make sure you're understanding it right when you when you purchase um, so overall, I think these the quality hasn't changed. I think a few of the colors have shifted a little bit. Uh, that could be due to availability of pigments and just formulations changing over the last uh, couple decades. But um, overall, I think you're getting the same pencil. If you want to go and buy a pencil to replace one that you've broken or you've used up, I think you can do that with confidence uh, with the Derwent. So this is kind of fun. I like geeky, nerdy things like this. Um, uh, you may be wondering, should I go with something like this or go with something like a Derwent Intense that won't lift up? And I think there's there's the answer for you. The Intense range does have a lot of fugitive colors, but it, overall it's a little more light fast and their pans are have been selected to be light fast, which I think is, is uh, good. But if you want a pencil, uh, you would want to look at the pencils. And don't be afraid of just buying open stock. You don't need to have every color. And if you're concerned about light fastness, that's, it's a waste of money to buy the full sets. Go through the charts and compare the different lines of pencils and see what qualities you want. Do you want certain colors? Maybe you want your blues not to be able to be lifted because you want to um, you want to glaze with blue or you want to do skies and then you want to be able to you know paint on top and not have that lift up. 
think about the colors and the qualities that you want in those colors and um, and proceed accordingly with colors that are light fast if that's important to you. Now, I use my watercolor pencils usually for greeting cards. So I'm not expecting those greeting cards to stick around for a hundred years. So I'm not worried about using, I'll use whatever color I want to use. Even on a scrapbook page, if I'm using it to color in an image like a decoration or stamped image on a scrapbook page, I know that page is not going to be hanging on the wall, it's going to be in a book, and I'm not as concerned with that fading as I would be, you know, I mean, who? It, they'll probably last as long as the inks that I printed the photos with, so I'm not that concerned about that. But if I was going to paint a painting and sell it, I would be concerned because I don't want somebody to hang up a painting and then have it disappear in a couple of weeks. Now, I rarely sell artwork, and if I do, it's... Um, generally watercolor paintings with light fast colors. I don't tend to use pencils for uh, work for sale unless I'm adding accents on top of something, a watercolor painting, and then I'm using like a, a wax based pencil typically. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind because these are a professional pencil. They're from a professional company, but they are not light fast. So do your research when you're buying pencils and consider buying open stock because you can really customize what you need. You may pay a little more per pencil, but you won't be wasting your money on things you're not going to use. So keep that in mind. And I know this sounds completely ironic, considering I am somebody that loves to have the complete set of something. I totally get the irony there, but, um, but I'm trying to make you a wiser shopper than me. But anyway, I just wanted to put that out there, and I did want to disclose that Derwent sent that set of 36 new version for me to compare to my old version, um, and I thought it was a lot of fun. So if you like videos like this, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like me to compare some of my older stuff with newer stuff if I have them, let me know, because um, it's fun to do. I'm curious. I have a curious mind, and I love to see how things change over the years. But um, I would definitely say if you're using up some of your older st stash, or you had a set back in high school, and you're wondering if they're still good if they're still the same. I would say they're absolutely still the same with just a few colors that have um, uh, shifted over the years. But um, I wouldn't say it's a it's a huge it's a huge deal. It tends to be the purples. Uh, yeah, it tends to be colors with a purple undertone. So there must have been something with one of those pigments that had to be um, that had to be replaced. I would say because where the art this is funny the um, art market does not have the pull with pigment manufacturers to dictate what gets made. A lot of pigments are synthetically made and it's the plastics industry and the automotive industry that dictates what colors get made and what colors get uh, renewed. And mostly the automotive industry because those paints are light fast. So when quinacridone gold stores ran out, it wasn't because the mines dried up and they couldn't mine it anymore. It's, it's, com it's, companies stopped making it because there wasn't the demand from the auto industry. When Harvest Gold appliances come back in style, we'll be able to get our quinacridone gold single pigment color again. But the art world does not have the pull to get these big manufacturers to manufacture pigment. So um, so there's, there's the deal there with that. So things happen. Pigment supplies run out because they followed a favor with the plastics and the um, automotive industry, uh, where like everybody has, well not everybody, but most people have a car, most people have appliances in their house, most people buy things made of plastic, um, you know, so those companies get to kind of dictate what's going to be made and what's going to be sold. So uh, the art the, the art supply world gets the dregs and they've got to make do with what is available and that's why colors change over the years. I don't know if this was interesting, I hope so. Um, or, or, you know, maybe you're watching this to fall asleep, and, and if so, nighty night, sweet dreams. <laughs> I do hear that sometimes, and it makes me laugh. But uh, anyway, I'll try not to be too exciting, because people are trying to sleep here. Uh, thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you're still awake. Until next time, happy crafting.